Good morning. This week we'll be talking about gender, what it is, how it operates, and how it applies to you. The agenda for this gender presentation, we'll, beginning, we'll be beginning with a warm-up. We'll be talking about the difference between biological sex and gender. This may, be as a this may come as a surprise to you because I'm sure you've filled out many forms that have used the word gender. And so I'm going to be talking to you about how this, that's a bit problematic. We'll be talking about male privilege, what it is, how it operates, and how, as I said, how it applies to you, especially the, the men who may be watching this presentation. This may come as a surprise to you, so uh, I hope you're excited for that. We'll be talking about gender stereotypes, and finally, we'll be talking about language, and how, even in the English language, gender plays a strong role in shaping how we look at gender. So let's begin with the warm-up question. Do girls and women experience the world in exactly the same way boys and men do? I'm sure the, the knee-jerk reaction is, of course we do. Of course we inhabit the world in the same way. Um, we go to school together, we go to class, women vote, men vote, we go to the same social spaces. But I want you to dig deeper into this question, especially if you're a woman sitting at home, and ask yourself, are there situations in which my experience differs fundamentally to, the man, to a man's experience in the same place? Right? So for example, uh, if I go out with a group of colleagues, uh, I have no fear of just going down the street, maybe perhaps meeting someone, or getting into a taxi on the way home, or perhaps even just you know, going out by myself and not feeling at all unsafe or insecure. However, my w the woman colleagues next to me uh, may inhabit the same place in a different way. Right? They may feel that even to go to the restroom in that establishment, they may need someone to go with them, whereas the, ma the male colleagues just go by themselves. They may feel a bit afraid to get into a taxi or to go down, down the street by themselves, right? Something that I as a man don't necessarily feel. And so doing gender or in inhabiting the, in the same space, gender is operating, all right? And we'll be talking a little bit more about that. If you're a man, I want you to think about how your experience and the type of expectations you have and how they compare to women around you. All right. Now, biological sex is something we are. Gender is something that we do. I've, uh, you'll see a few of the slides have been drawn on already because I want to save a bit of time, and this is a great methodo methodological tool to do that. Okay, many of you have seen the form that says gender, male, female, or other, in some cases, other, right? Now, biological sex, what this should actually say is sex, not gender, and I'll explain to you why in a moment. Biological sex is something that we're born with, right? That we're born as. So. When the baby comes out the, the mother, the doctor will say, or the nurse will say, it's a, or it's a, that's biological sex, right? What happens after that is gender. Gender is the way we socialize uh, the child to be and behave a specific way. The way I've cut my hair is a, way, a form of doing gender. The clothes that I'm wearing is a form of doing gender, right? And the clothes that I'm, I may not be wearing, the other options that I do not choose, are me doing gender, okay? Now, gender, I've, I've drawn this space over here to say that this is the wrong way to look at gender when, they, when they're crafting these forms. What they should be saying is sex, because gender is an action. All right. Now, Western Zimmerman, I've broken down, I've underlined a few spaces in the slide for you, right? But I want to bring to you this fundamental piece, and that is the distinction between men and women. Gender initially began as, as I've said, biological sex. But then it began to talk about socialization and interactions and how we make decisions. All right. Now, initially, as I said, the constructionist, constructionist perspective spoke about gender as something more than just sexual categories, okay? more than just the dichotomy of men and women. Right? It actually began to talk about gendered activities, the sports that we allow our children or don't allow our children to play. The way in which we talk to our children, we find that when, when we have young children and they're girls, we talk to them in a soft and kind voice. And we talk to them almost with a smile, but with boys, we adopt a different persona towards them. That's a type of gender activity. Okay? Uh, and what we find is that literally it's, it involves, gender involves interactions between people. All right? Now, what this says is that gender is more than just this dichotomy. It's actually a fluid notion. And we'll be talking a little bit more about that in a moment. OK. Now, what this is is a list of male privileges. Let me explain to you what, what privilege is, OK, just using a very simple example. Let's say I have two friends, and I, I'm entering a building. All right? The building has steps, a door. I go in, 
I rest my hand on the counter and I talk to the consultant. I then walk, I use the restroom on the way out and I leave. My friends have a different experience alongside me. My colleague in a wheelchair, for example, may be asking me whether there's a wheelchair ramp or whether someone will be able to open the door for them or whether the counter will be the appropriate height or whether they'll be able to use the bathroom on the way out or not. Okay? My transgender friend may not experience the same thing that my friend in a wheelchair does, but they may be asking about whether they will be safe inside the room or whether they'll be able to use the bathroom in the facility and whether whichever bathroom they use, whether they'll, they'll be safe in there or not. Okay? Now the fact that I don't have those experiences next to my two friends because the building was designed for me is a form of privilege. If the building was designed for someone in a wheelchair, I would be navigating that building in a different way. Okay? Now, in the same way that I, can, I as a man can walk down the street by myself and a woman can in theory but doesn't in practice is a form of privilege. All right? Now this is an example of male privilege. These are some privileges that a man wrote down. Okay? And I've highlighted some that apply to you. So, he says, I'm far less likely to face sexual harassment at work than my female co-workers are. Right? As a child, chances are I got more teacher attention than girls who raised their hands. I want you to think about your school experience as we go through this. As a child, chances are I was encouraged to be more active and outgoing than, than my sisters. If I have children and a career, no one will think I'm selfish for not staying at home. I want you to think about how in your education classes, how you may be a majority, how you as women, for example, may be a majority, but we, we walk one block across in the engineering department and all of a sudden you might be in the minority. What is it about that, right? And part, about, part of that is gender stereotypes, right? You'll notice that now I'm using pink and blue, right? Colors are a way of playing gender, right? I'm wearing green, for example. I'm trying to be neutral in terms of the way I present gender. So when we think about feminine characteristics, we think about dependency, submissive, passive. We think about talkative, gentle, and nurturing. But when we think of men, we think of aggressive, actively, worldly, tough, logical, analytical, blunt, and not nurturing. So there's this dichotomy, right? That we want men to be a certain way and we want women to be a certain way. And if they act outside of those boundaries, we socialize them. Remember, we assimilate them. We socialize them, right? Okay. Now, gender is not only out there. Gender is also in the way we use language. Now, I've written <coughs> five terms that we, that we find in the English language. And what I want to highlight by using these terms is the way in which gender plays out. Notice that if we begin to unpack these female terms, what we find is that they're really based on men, right? They can't exist by themselves as women, but what they actually are is a, the men is the root of these sayings, right? So, for example, he, right? Female, right? Oh, not a female, a woman. Well, woman is made up of man, men or man, right? So gender is not only something that um, it's deeply embedded in the way that we do things and the way that we think about things. All right. Now, what are some takeaways from this presentation? Right? Notice, I gave you an agenda in the beginning of the presentation, and I give you takeaways at the end. I want you to think about the different presentations that I've given and how I've structured them differently. All right? I initially began presentations by just beginning the presentation. Now I'm using a structure. The reason for this is that I want to give you a sense of what it's like to be in an unstructured learning environment and a structured learning environment. Your students, based on their needs and based on their abilities, may thrive in unstructured or structured environments. My job as the instructor is to give you both and to help you decide what works best for you. Anyways, takeaways. Gender is something we do. Biological sex is what we are. Okay? Doing gender, notice this term, doing gender, occurs all around us. It shapes our behavior and what we perceive as normal. What we perceive as normal. What is normal? Okay? I want you to think about this. What is your normal? What are things that come normally to you? Right? Finally, I'm going to give you some homework, and this is what I would like you to do. I'd like you to make a list with two columns, right? So imagine this is your piece of paper. It's portrait. This piece of paper is portrait, all right? And it's going to have a list down the middle, all right? On the one side, write all the character types from cartoons which are female. 
So here I'm going to write an f, and here I'm going to write m. Okay. On the other side, I want you to write the opposite. So on this side, you might write something like which. In this case, I'd like you to write wizard. Right? And I want you to go down as far as you can. All right? Compare the lists and what you think of one when compared to its direct opposite. Right? So you're going to have this list. The opposites are next to each other. I want you to compare them once you're done. Finally, what connotations you draw are examples of doing gender. So whatever comes into your mind, whatever comes into your mind as a result of doing this activity is the very act of doing gender. Thank you very much for uh, this presentation, and we shall see you in the next one.